Good morning and welcome to the New Forest National Park. I got up at silly o'clock this morning to come and travel uh, an hour and a half, it's not too far I suppose, along the south coast of England uh, from my home in the South Downs National Park uh, to a very, very different setting to what I'm used to from where I live. I get the rolling hills over here, we've got heathland and we've got some really spectacular gnarly trees and autumn colour, which you'll be unsurprised to know is what I am attempting to capture today. Now this area is known for deer as well and the new forest ponies. I've got a couple just outside of camera at the moment. Uh, I just need to keep an eye on them because they have a bit of a reputation for not being the friendliest of animals. So today, my target is this. I would like to capture some panos, not kind of the wide vistas, but perhaps go in and capture some interesting colour, uh, some lovely tree trunks, get that texture, perhaps even get some of the lovely bracken involved. At the moment, I have this place to myself. I am on the Ornamental Drive, which is just north of the A35, um, and it's known for having fabulous treescapes, um, and the opportunity to kind of get some intimate wildlife shots as well. The one thing I do know is that I've got to put my wellies on because I've just done a bit of a recce and ended up quite wet, quite frankly. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, get kitted up and take you with me to do a bit of exploring. Now what you're gonna see is a catalogue of small disasters and indecision due to my lack of knowledge of the area. Shooting woodlands is hard enough without adding unfamiliarity into the pot. The best woodland shots tend to come from those who have an intimate knowledge of a place, those who know where to go when certain conditions happen, those who don't do an impression of a headless chicken on camera. You have been warned. Well, I have just seen a white van going up and down here, this particular road, about four or five times, and I thought, hmm, that has to be a photographer. He's just pulled in and it's someone I follow. Quite exciting. Uh, it's got some really nice work. If you have a look at his stuff, Rob Dove from Southampton, got a good portfolio. Right, let me show you what I'm wanting here. This might be, let me turn around here, this area of colour here might be an opportunity for a first pano. Oh, I have no idea if I'm going to get anything good, but what I'm looking to do, stick a long lens on and go intimate in the lower branches where the colour is and also the floor. Well, that's exciting. Never had this before. I've got an F00 aperture problem. On my Canon stuff, I'm looking at the Canon community and finding out what it is. And it suggests that uh, I may not be able to take a shot today. That would be annoying. Right, welcome. Sort this logically. So I applied a touch of welcome logic and thought, well, if I were in IT, what would I do? So I pressed random buttons, swore a lot, and... Nice. Problem solved. By detaching and reattaching the lens. Very complicated. I know what I'm like. I end up focusing on one bit, right? And I, I then miss everything else. So just welcome. Keep an eye on what's going on to your right. What is going on to my right is this. The sun is coming up somewhere over there uh, and it's hitting the top of the leaves. It's just making them glow a little bit, which is lovely. So instead of responding to the dynamic light situation, like a fool, I sat on my composition and got, well, rubbish really. I stitched the raws together and did a basic edit or two, but I just gave up. The problem with not knowing a place is you can't be in the right position for when the sun breaks through or or things happen. Oh, that's nice. Okay, I've got nice sunbeams, but I've also got a fallen tree that's just showing its backside to me. That's not gonna work. Uh, and color is not always enough. You need some nice light on it, which I didn't have at the last shot. And so now I'm just going round in circles, literally thinking, do I stay here or do I go up the road? And I think the answer is I'm going up the road because this behind me, it's now in pretty much full sun and it's not doing it for me. So I'm just make a decision, woman. Sometimes a cycle of indecision sets in if I don't know an area well enough. I'm always thinking somewhere else that looks more promising. So it's off to venue two and a profusion of poor choices. 
right I have driven up the road and what I'm going to do is just without a camera unless I'm really really interested in something I'm going to just go up and down and jump out the car at legal spots to park and just have a look at what the trees are offering in terms of interest i.e. not straight up and down and autumnal colour I like these but I don't know what to do with them some interesting trees here as you can see the sun's poking through right now which means it won't be by the time I go and get my kit right right so I have a tree in mind uh, as you can see by the light source here I am managing to capture the sun through the branches uh, I'm getting I'm not in love with this I'm getting a bit of a sun star which is great, except I haven't, don't, I don't think I've got the composition right and I'm just chasing around trying to do anything, anything at the moment that's going to give me something. That sun star's huge, man. What I've got now is much more of a subtle sun star, F16, probably on about 0.6 of a second, but I think that might be subtle enough to actually be something I can work with. And if you look, what I've also got is some lovely kind of light stuff coming down here and also on that side. I also like a bit of a gadget and I've treated myself to a, a filter. It's a Nissi Black Mist filter and um, it has a, it kind of gives an a, ethereal effect to, to landscape photography, particularly if you've got the light in it. Um, so like my, one of my last shots, I got a sun star, which I think is vaguely passable uh, but actually um, this if I put that on should kind of diffuse the light quite a bit um, so I'm going to give that a go at some stage today um, I'm hoping I haven't been conned I first got interested in these filters when I saw Mark Denny demonstrate them on his channel they reduce highlights and slightly lower a scene's overall contrast creating a diffusion effect and a softer feel to the image overall they're mainly used in portrait photography, but have an application in some landscape photography settings. I know I've not got it quite right here, but the comparison should help you see what the filters can do. Right, whilst I have my breakfast, a pondering. As soon as I started focusing on something else, in this case, whoop, my black mist filter, I started seeing things. So I don't know if you're like me, I have discovered that when I panic, when I think I've got to achieve, I end up achieving nothing. Now, what I've got so far, it's not going to set the world on fire. It's not going to be award winning, but some of them are quite nice little shots, particularly with that filter. Now, I know it's designed for portraiture, but actually, I think it's got quite a good application for landscape photography. Not, not all year round, but certainly for this time of year, for softening, for prolonging, for giving slightly that ethereal-ness. After I've had my breakfast, I'll crack on and uh, see what else this place has to offer. Maybe with my filter, if it slows me down. Now, so far I had achieved absolutely nothing except a bit of experimentation with a new toy. Although it's lovely to explore, I wanted to come away with something, even if I'd missed optimal pano time. Eventually, I stumbled across something promising. A couple of the main issues that I have when I work in woodland is simplifying the scene, trying to make sense of everything that's going on in front of me, and also trying to avoid a cluttered foreground. I've often admired those wonderful shots of lone low branches with the colour on, on beech trees Woo! in autumn. And where I am, I've got lots of uh, beech trees, loads of them. But what I don't have is an uncluttered foreground because we have a real issue with ash dieback where we are. Essentially what that means is that we don't have much of an opportunity for clear foregrounds. Just behind me now is an area of younger trees that I want to go and have a look at. Um, partly because I'm thinking I might just do an ICM, uh, which would just be green and autumnal colour. But also that every tree is young, okay, but it's covered in moss. What I've got is this, which is quite uniform. But look, everything, everything here is covered in moss. 
And I don't think I've seen that before, not to this extent. So I'm going to see if I can do something here. So at the moment I'm picking out little vignettes and I'm focused on these five trees here. And with the softness that the filter is giving, it's really helping actually with kind of holding the light back. I've got the light popping in and out from behind the, cl uh, the clouds. Um, I'm just trying to find yeah, the, the interesting compositions. What I'm trying to do here is get some ICMs in camera movement shots. I am tripod bound and as you can see I'm having various degrees of success. Uh, the ones that are slower and darker just aren't working so I'm slightly overexposing and I'm trying to get uh, sort of almost quite a light kind of portrait here and all I'm doing is I'm setting it as much as I can do at the moment I'm having to go f16 because I'm trying to get uh, as long a shot as possible so at the moment I'm on f16 about 0.6 of a second effectively a two second timer and all I'm doing is this that tilting it down that's my crap <laughs> that was crap it was too slow um, but essentially I'm starting sort of fairly high up in the shot and the faster I seem to go um, the more good ICMing I've got so one two we oh, just what well, you got to watch out is the positioning as well I've got two or three I'm really keen on and the others are just a bit pants Sometimes you've just got to know when to give up. So I decided to call it a day and wend my way home. A few weeks later, when I finally looked at the shots, I found one, one, that I genuinely liked. Not at all what I've envisaged, but hey. Well, to sum up today, I've met some interesting people, had some great conversations. Um, I've explored, I've got a couple of shots that might be interesting, but overall I think the big surprise of the day has been the Nissi Quarter Black Mist Filter. Who knew? It's quite a revelation. And it's been good to be able to give you the comparisons between those with and without the filter. So I'm going to wend my way back to West Sussex now. It's going to be a bit of a journey. It is after all a Friday afternoon. Thank you for joining me today. And if you have discerned value in what you have seen, please consider giving it a like or a subscribe. And I'll see you next time.